I found my laser cutter and engraver, the Xtool D1 Pro, a very rewarding addition to my workshop. It gives me a lot of creative possibilities which I really enjoy turning into projects. If you're interested in that, come on in. Hi and welcome, I'm Andreas. A couple of months ago I was contacted by Xtool if I wanted to try out their laser cutter and engraver, the D1 Pro. I looked at the product and at their website and support materials and so on and I decided that would be a good idea. It looked like a well-made product with lots of support materials on their site and so I said yes. Since then I've created dozens of projects with it and gained some experience which I'd like to share with you today. Please do know that I got my laser as a free review item. I always try to be unbiased and neutral in my review and give you my honest opinion, but you should know that I didn't pay for this product. So let's get started by first looking at the unpacking and the assembly process out of the box and up to the functioning laser. Assembling the laser was fairly straightforward. There are quite a few parts though um, and I really do recommend that you read the instruction manual carefully or watch the instruction videos. Those are really well made and they tell you every step to do. At one point I missed a step because I sort of skipped ahead and one cable was really nicely tucked away in the frame so I didn't see it immediately. So that took me some searching for the solution um, because the laser didn't work properly then. But that was my fault because I thought, well, I'd just skip a few steps. So I don't recommend doing that. Going step by step is really the best way of getting your laser running quickly. So let's see how you actually create a product going from the idea that you create digitally to the finished product. The first step is to create a digital version of your product. You can do that in the X2 software that comes free with the laser or in some other drawing software that you use. I usually use Affinity Designer on my Mac, which I'm already familiar with, but, and then export the file in the SVG format. Make sure to convert any writing into curves so that they really translate into a file that the laser can process. If you don't have a vector-based drawing app, you can try Inkscape, which is free and available for different platforms. I'll put a link to that in the description. Or simply use the software by Xtool, which is called Xtool Creative Space, but that's a little more limited. 
and there is also light burn which is sort of professional grade and is not free um, I haven't got to using that yet because so far my approach with a vector based drawing program and um, the extra creative space has done everything I needed to do. No matter which way you created your digital file, you will need either extra creative space, that app that comes for free with the laser or Lightburn to connect your computer to the laser. And in these apps, either of the two, you decide what to do with all the lines. Basically, there are three options. The first one is called score, which means the laser runs a thin burned line around the line that you created digitally. The second is called engrave, which means a whole area will be burned, so that just becomes dark or depending on your material, it becomes opaque when it was transparent before. And the third option is cut, which obviously then cuts the whole material. And these settings will be made in extra creative space or light burn. And of course, they will have to be adjusted to the material that you use. For example, if you use a thin wood, obviously you don't need as much power for cutting as if you use a thicker wood. Um, the extra creative space software has a lot of presets that you can use. So for example, I realized when I use four millimeter poplar plywood, I can use the settings that come with the Excel Creative Space software for three millimeter base wood plywood. They just work as well. So I use those for my four millimeter poplar plywood. There are lots of presets in the app itself or online on the website. Put a link to it in the description. But with some materials, of course, you will just have to experiment and see which settings work. Sometimes you will get maybe burns because you put too much power or your cut will not go all the way through. So we'll have to do another pass or something like that. So that's really something that you have to experiment with. And I hear that the Creative Space software um, will have the feature of saving those presets that you create yourselves in the future. But at the moment, you have to note it down somewhere so that you can reuse it at some later point. Step three then is in the software to highlight the lines that you're dealing with and then decide should they be scored, should the area be engraved or should the line be a cut line. Step four is to place your workpiece in the laser and you get a red cross mark which helps you align the workpiece and you have to adjust the height of the laser head and that is very easy with the D1 Pro because it has a thumb screw that you loosen and then it has a sort of lever that you can put down and you set it on top of the workpiece then you tighten this thumb screw put the lever back up and then you always have the perfect distance. That's really something that I like very much because I know that other other lasers have a much more cumbersome process and this really just takes a couple of seconds. So you put your um, piece in, adjust the height and then you're almost ready to go. Before you actually start the actual engraving or cutting or scoring, there is one last step which is called framing. And in the app you just click frame and then you hit the button on the laser and then the laser draws out the area that it will later also draw out when you actually run it. That is to make sure that none of your lines are actually outside your workpiece. So that's basically the final check before you hit start and actually do the laser cutting or engraving. And then the final step is to hit start in the software and hit the button on the laser itself. And then you just watch as the laser turns your idea into an actual touchable object, which I really like and always find very rewarding. So what has my everyday experience been like? I've created dozens of projects and I found it very easy to create simple projects, for example, like these key tags. You just write a name, you score a line, you cut a line and basically you're done. That is really very easy and you get up to speed in no time. And it's fairly easy to create even more complex projects like this a decoration for example which has a cut line a score line and some engraving but um, also it is not 
very difficult. You just need some imagination. You need some experience with the drawing app and that you really get just by doing or by watching the tutorials, which there are plenty. And I really found it to be fairly easy to get started even with more complex projects. Um, a couple of things to keep in mind um, to run this thing safely, especially when you engrave or when you cut, there is a good amount of smoke created and you should make sure that that smoke doesn't end up in the room where you're working. So in my case, I have the enclosure um, that goes with the engraver but is not included. Um, and that has its own fan that draws out the smoke and I have the smoke purifier which purifies that smoke and those fumes um, and I also have the air assist which creates a steady flow of air just where the cutting or the engraving is done that makes the results better because it removes those brown burn marks that sometimes occur when the smoke doesn't get drawn out so make sure either to get the enclosure and the smoke purifier or to make sure that you're running the laser in a space that is very, very well went ventilated um, because it really will be harmful for you to breathe in those fumes. Another thing to keep in mind is that it says everywhere not to run the laser unattended. And I thought, well, of course, I can go outside for a minute or two, but actually this happened, so I just thought, well, this is thicker plywood. Instead of two passes, I'll give it three or four passes. But what happens is, well, um, the plywood gets really hot at the bottom of the cut, and if it doesn't get all the way through, basically it starts to burn out there. So I came back after two minutes and found this, and I really didn't like it. Um, so now I really don't leave it unattended at all. I'm always in the room. I check regularly, even if the run takes several minutes or sometimes even half an hour if it's a complex run but really don't leave it unattended you might be back for a surprise if there are open flames it, it usually has a flame detector that it shuts off but still this actually sort of glowed when i came back there weren't open flames but there was a lot of smoke in there so you really don't want to do that um i actually um yeah, sort of melted part of the, the laser shield that's around it. And I usually leave such things in place when I make a mistake like that. I could replace it, this is, it's available as a spare part, but I usually leave it in place just as a reminder, look here, this deformed piece, this is the moment when you didn't stick to the safety precautions, don't do that again. So I really recommend sticking to that keeping the smoke out, drawing it out in some way, and really not leaving it unattended. The last thing is to protect your eyes. Obviously, you shouldn't um, look into the laser beam, which is fairly hard to do, but possible if you really get close. So either use the goggles that come with the laser, or if you run it in the enclosure, there is this shield, um, transparent shield here, which doesn't let the laser beams come out. But just keep in mind, that's also th something to look out for to protect your eyes. So what's my conclusion? I'm thoroughly enjoying the D1 Pro and I have created lots of projects with new ideas bubbling up all the time. So it really expands the creative possibilities of my wood shop and even though I'm my focus is still on creating woodworking projects, having a laser like that really gets you that special add-on, for example, putting some lettering on a on a cabinet or um, some decorative element somewhere or just creating a nice present for someone that I've really enjoyed. So um, there are all the links that I talked about in the description and also the links to the, the software and stuff like that and Inkscape and whatnot. And I sometimes run sales so if you're interested in actually getting one you might want to look out for sales which they have fairly regularly so that you might actually save a buck or two. So I hope you enjoyed the video and got some impression of what you can do with such a laser. See you next time. Bye bye.